Il digiuno controllato può avere un ruolo nella gestione dei pazienti affetti da tumore e nella prevenzione della malattia tumorale? Noi ne parliamo con un grande esperto di questo argomento, il professor Andreas Michelsen, che ha tenuto un interessante intervento sul tema qui a Milano all'Istituto Nazionale dei Tumori, dove è in corso un convegno promosso dall'Accademia Nazionale di Medicina che riunisce esperti italiani e internazionali per fare il punto sulle ricerche in corso sulla relazione tra metabolismo e immunità dei tumori umani. Professor Michelsen, during the, your talk today, uh, you, you talked about the importance of fasting as a prevention for metabolic syndrome and overweight. But uh, uh, what's the experience and the evidence supporting this strategy? Yeah, fasting is very interesting in metabolic syndrome. We have uh, experienced 20, 30 years in thousands of patients that it works in diabetes type 2, hypertension, fatty liver. And in the last 10 years, we also see randomized trials, observational trials, So it really works. There is evidence. What we don't know is how many times in the year you have to fast. That's our research currently. And fasting can be important even for oncologic patients and especially for, fa for patients <coughs> undergoing chemotherapy. Which are the experience and the first clinical evidence about it? Of course, we have to be very prudent in oncology in cancer patients. We don't want to induce underweight. Yeah. But we have now done two trials assessing quality of life, well-being, side effects, if cancer patients undergo a fast for two or three days during chemotherapy. And in fact, quality of life, well-being is improved and side effects are reduced. So we see a really a, a promise for fasting during chemotherapy and we practice it now in our patients. At uh, Charity Berlin, that is the center where you work, yeah. you are uh, testing different modes of uh, fasting. Yeah. Could you tell us something about it? Yeah, important question. I mean, fasting is severe caloric restriction, but the question is what do you eat with the rest of calories? Yeah, only some liquids, soup, juice or some uh, light meals. So we have different kinds of fasting types and we do it in an individual way. When patients undergo chemotherapy, some don't like juice, some don't like salad. The most important is to go for an individual course for inducing these fasting schemes. And how important can fasting be? from the point of view of prevention of cancer and uh, aging and uh, age-associated disease? It's very fascinating because from animal research, from experimental research, it's totally clear that fasting leads to longer age, healthy age, healthy aging, and decelerates age-associated disease, what cancer also is, like, and also metabolic syndrome. And so it holds promise that if we would fast two or three times for one week a year, we can prolong life and maybe prevent some, some percentage of cancer disease, maybe 30 or 40 percent. This has to be investigated in further studies. <laughs>